there and welcome to this video. My name is Erica Stout and I am a licensed realtor in the state of Washington. Today we're going to be talking about some 10 2020 home design trends. Now I'm located in the Pacific Northwest so these home design trends, some of them, especially the external ones, are going to be more focused on the Pacific Northwest. So let's enjoy. Trend number one is natural textures. All right, so this is about not painting over existing wood in your home, leaving the beautiful brick fireplace that you have intact. Don't paint it over with like a white or a gray and maybe bring in some natural stones. So this is about really not painting over or trying to whitewash or gray out everything that's in your home, all right? People are really looking to bring warmth and nature into their homes. We uh, unfortunately are still in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic and sometimes the feeling of just whitewashing over everything or graying out all of your walls just leads to more of a sterile and not a really homey environment. So people are looking to bring warmth and nature into their spaces. So let's take a look at some examples for this. So what we have here is we have a image uh, provided by Norstone and we see these beautiful wood beams here. All right, they haven't been painted over. And then we've got this lovely stone fireplace here. Also interesting to note is that the floors are a natural tone here. So I know that gray LVP, which is luxury vinyl plank flooring, has been trendy and people are still putting it in their homes, but I predict that a lot of these more natural tones are gonna take hold and be very strong. Another image here is from AAA Natural Stone, and we can see this beautiful limestone fireplace here. It really is quite lovely. Then we have some natural wood uh, built-ins here. So some shelvings here, some cabinets, and then some open shelving. You'll find a lot of limestone or materials like it in a lot of homes that were built in the 1960s. And unfortunately, I've seen far too many of them painted over with, way, with gray or white paint. I'm gonna suggest that you leave them natural as is and incorporate them into your home for the natural beauty that they provide. Going into trend number two, and we'll leave the same image up that we just talked about, is warmer interior paint colors. So here we are again uh, with this same image and you can see that the paint on the walls here it's a warm white. It's a nice, beautiful, soft white. Here is a picture of some internal shots of a home that I'm actually going to look at tomorrow. Um, a client has requested to see it, but you can see again that we've got the warm textures, sorry, the warm colors on the wall. We have the natural flooring here. All right. This home has been beautifully staged. Here's some other images here. Uh, the ceiling is lovely. Um, ceiling is white, trim is white, but you notice that the walls aren't gray. They're like a, a soft beige and the flooring is nice and warm. Next image here is showing the kitchen. This is absolutely adorable. I love that they left this original cut out wood corner shelf here. This whole kitchen is the uh, original here. Uh, it's been painted over, it was wood before. But again, we see that nice warm white and then there's white accents, like bright white. But what I'm saying here is don't white out your home. I know it's really tempting to just wanna paint every single wall white because that's what's been popular and trending, but we're now moving into warmer tones and warmer textures, warmer feelings. So this is also for doing uh, for gray as well. So don't gray out or white out your home. Next trend, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, number three is whimsical bathrooms. So whimsical bathrooms, when I say that, I mean things like maybe an unexpected pop of color. So maybe the vanity is like bright turquoise. Maybe there's some fun mosaic tile. Maybe there's even wallpaper. So a trend is to express your creativity in the bathroom. So maybe you want, you don't want to take one of the trends uh, in your main living space, but have a little bit of fun in the bathroom. So let's look at some examples here. 
So firstly, vintage bathrooms are always, always, always a good idea. This bathroom here is classic. This is probably a 1930s, 1940s style tiled bathroom here. And what they've done to kind of maybe modernize it a bit is this lovely tangerine color on the wall. And they've replaced what was most likely glass knobs with these amber colored glass knobs here. So we've got a blue vase over here for a pop of color, but this is an absolutely timeless, timeless bathroom. If you have a vintage bathroom, I highly, highly, highly consider Sorry, I highly recommend that you consider keeping it. Okay, they don't build craftsmanship like this anymore with the built-in vanities here. This is a mirrored cabinet. These are just simply stunning and timeless. So let's look at a couple more uh, options, maybe some that are more contemporary. So the next image here, oh, gotta go over to that screen. Here we go. Is this Fabulous, fabulous, kind of like a fuchsia red color. We would call this rubine red in the Pantone color book. And we've got beautiful natural textures on the wall. So again, the lovely, lovely wooden textures here. Stunning, stunning, stunning vanity here. Notice how it's also that floating style, like you don't see uh, legs underneath, another thing very popular. So this has a modern look while also being whimsical. And again, it really captures that, uh, the trend of having natural textures in your home. So maybe the rest of the home is something like this. Uh, maybe that bathroom would look marvelous in, not that one, but in this home here, we can see how this would easily fit in. We've got the wood already. There's some gray stonework here. And then maybe this, is the bathroom. I mean, isn't that just lovely? Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well, let's see what else we've got here. Um, next image, okay. This one is with wallpaper and you can see that the wallpaper has like a linen or a textured look. So the whimsy here is coming from the wallpaper. You can see that there's a very sort of traditional Baroque style wooden uh, vanity here. And this would look beautiful in, not that one, in this home. Wouldn't that just be lovely? Okay, let me go back. That bathroom in this house. I mean, I think it's, I think it's perfect. Let's circle through here and see what other bathrooms we've got on here. Uh, whimsical bathroom JPEG, what is that? Oh, here we go. Here is the novelty tile that I was uh, that I was talking about here. This reminds me of the game Cubert. Then we have something that appears to be like a slate octagon tile on the floor. Um, I'm not saying that it is slate, but again, it brings that natural texture into the home. And this lovely sort of teal green color uh, vanity here. So the whimsy that's added is the Cubert tile on the left and also this beautiful uh, deep teal uh, vanity here. So number four on the list is room dividers for open concept homes, right? So open concept is still popular and I'm gonna make a video in the future um, talking about open concept, the history of it, pluses, minuses, all sorts of stuff. So I'm definitely gonna take a deep dive into open concept because I absolutely have a love-hate relationship with it. That being said, many people still are embracing the open concept floor plan, but what happens when now you're working from home and you need a dedicated office space and you need a space for the kids to do homeschooling? So they explored ways to separate their space with furniture. Here is a lovely blog article I found from a site called Home Rebellion. And here are, I'm just gonna scroll through here. It has some great text to read, but here we go. Beautiful mid-century bookcase that is separating the living area from the dining area. Simply stunning. Here is a metal and wood version here. So what we're looking at is basically open shelving or open bookcases. Here is another one that it, here's the dining area and this is now a desk. So this is something that I can totally see being applicable for now. Could as well be a laptop here, I know it isn't, but. Here is a fiberglass kitchen divider and I'm sure that these are little gold stars here. Interesting uh, cutout 
here. I guess they're showing, so <laughs> going off topic here, but this is a meter of some sort. Here's some insulation and the siding. Um, but who, anyway? Here's another one where they're painting it. I mean, look at these adorable cabinets also, by the way, but that's definitely a bold choice. Ah, here we go. Do you see the fireplace in the background there? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Notice how they didn't paint over that. More uh, screening designs and dividers. I found a seller. Oh, I'm gonna finish scrolling through these. I think I should. Look at this beautiful metal version here. This one, oh, simply stunning. I mean, that is beautiful. I predict that we're gonna be seeing a lot more of these types of things coming up in our homes just as a way to separate those spaces. Here is a seller on Etsy who is selling a, some modular wall panels. These are a bestseller, uh, and I'll click through the images here, but these, you just link them together, and I think they're hanging from the ceiling. Yep, so they're hung from the ceiling. Isn't that just simply stunning and beautiful? It's, it's dividing the space while not closing off the space. So definitely uh, one of my predictions uh, for the future, and that's why it is the number four on the list. 2021 home design trend number five is no more gray out or white out. It looks institutional, it looks cold, it looks unwelcoming, and especially with everything that's going on in the world right now, life is just really tough right now for a lot of people. COVID, politics, economy, things are difficult. So when we come home, we want a warm, inviting space. We don't want to feel cold and sterile in our own home. So just as an example, if we look at my uh, my screen now, would you rather live in this or would you rather live in this? Okay, you can feel the difference here. This one looks warm and inviting. This one looks cool and sterile, all right? so warm textures, no more painting every single thing white and painting every single thing gray just because it's trendy, okay? I predict that that trend is gonna go away and the warmer textures and natural materials are gonna come and take over. If you love gray and you love white, I'm not here to tell you don't do that because that's what you love. I'm here to tell you that if trend is consideration in any of your projects, go for the warmer over the cooler. If you do go with the white out or the gray out, I highly recommend that you at least mix in different textures and materials. That way it won't look as flat and as sterile. So maybe in the kitchen, maybe you have high gloss cabinets with like an eggshell finish on the walls, for example. Things like that. So just mixing textures. The reason why I really, really, really don't like this image that's on my screen right now is that everything is the same texture and tone. And the carpet has the same shine as the floors, as the wall, which isn't very much shine, by the way. I really, really dislike this. Personally, I really had to tell myself that I wasn't going to get personal in this video because it's about trend. Trend number six is open shelving. So open shelving is going to continue to be a trend, especially in kitchens. However, do not rip out all of your cabinets and replace them with open shelves. Just because open shelves are trendy does not mean that you need to rip everything off your wall and put in open shelving, okay? So some open shelving is accents, looks nice, and it looks contemporary. But people seem to get, um, they take it a little bit uh, overboard and they rip out all the cabinets on their wall and put up open shelves. So open shelves are not gonna protect your dishes as well as a cabinet would. Uh, so when you cook, there is gonna get grease that gets on them, dust. Uh, if you have cats, you basically can't have open shelving. And how about those folks who live uh, in earthquake zones? Those are also not ideal candidates for open shelving. So open shelves are good for things like spices, like accent things, but not necessarily things that you use every day. So please don't think that you need to convert all of your cabinets into open shelving in order to look modern and contemporary. Here are some examples here that I'm showing on the screen of two kitchens 
that have open shelving, but it's only in certain places. So here we have a little accent shelf on the wall here. And one of the reasons why I know this was done is because I've seen the before pictures, is they opened up, this was a wall here that had corner cabinets. So obviously if you uh, remove the corner, you're gonna have to remove the cabinets. So they've got a couple of open shelves here, but very nice. And look at the nice wood texture. It matches the wood beam, beautiful. Here is another one. So here is more of that jade green color that we're seeing a lot of. These are beautiful, super high cabinets. And look what we have over to the side here. We have some open shelving. Now, these cabinets are huge and tall and they're gonna hold a lot of things. So the fact that they gave up some storage space for these little shelves isn't that big of a deal. And again, you see it has plants. It has some little decor items on here. It doesn't have your everyday dishes. This is a great example of the open shelving concept in the kitchen, used well and used appropriate for a working kitchen. Trend number seven also happens in the kitchen and this is tuxedo cabinets. So we have seen tuxedo cabinets in the past year plus ish, but they're definitely still on trend. So tuxedo cabinets is where you have one color on the bottom and it's usually darker and then another color cabinet on the top, usually lighter. So they can make a kitchen that is normally closed in appear to be more open by having a dark color on the bottom and a color matching the walls on top. So a couple of examples of this are here is a beautiful modern kitchen. This is a new listing in our local MLS. We've got this slate gray on the bottom here, white on the top. So it looks very open because the white kind of fades into the wall behind it. Also notice this beautiful wood ceiling, okay? Back to the natural textures. This, uh, this is probably a quartz backsplash happening here, but it's got a lovely vein in it. Again, natural textures. Another version on a more uh, a reasonable scale, we'll say, is this version here. So we've got a lovely avocado green on the bottom with white on the top. So here is another version of a tuxedo kitchen. This one is probably more of a size and scale of kitchen that a lot of us are, you know, perhaps more familiar with. So tuxedo kitchens will continue and aren't they lovely? Trend number eight is black windows. So black windows look very contemporary and modern. There's options that you can do with the windows as well, where if you don't want a black window on the inside, and I'll show some examples of that, it can be black frame on the outside with white on the inside of the house. Although I have seen people are starting to put black windows on the inside of their home, meaning both sides are black, but it's absolutely a design choice. And I would highly, highly, highly suggest that you wanna consider that to see if that's gonna match your long-term decor. The black on the outside with the white on the inside is top notch in my opinion. Here are some examples. This house here is a house that is recently listed in our MLS and I'm gonna come back to this a couple of more times uh, through the video, but here we go. Black windows. Let's look at something from the inside. Here's a living space with black windows. Now notice that it goes really good with the decor because they have black trim at the top, black lampshades and black chairs here. So you can see that if your color palette wasn't utilizing black on the inside, the black inside windows are not really a good idea for you because then you might have to keep your decor or attempt to keep your decor consistent and matching with the black windows. Here's another one showing kitchen. Um, again looks really nice and classy. You've got the black on the stools to tie it together, black door, and the, uh, the black range fan over here. So again, it does look lovely. However, you might want to consider if you want the black portion to be on the inside as well. Trend number nine is one of probably my favorites, and that is mixed media exteriors. So in mixed media exteriors, you have a variety of building materials and textures used in a home. So you might have uh, wood siding 
You might have painted siding, you could have stonework, brick, etc. But it's really utilizing all of the different textures in how your house looks on the outside. So it's usually just the front facing elevation that has this technique, although in more upscale homes, they do it around the entire home. So jumping into some examples is here we are, we're back at this house again. We've got stucco, which is interesting. And this is in my MLS, because normally we don't do a lot of stucco here because it doesn't hold up well to the uh, the wet weather that we have here, but this could potentially not be stucco. It could be some kind of other material that is more durable and painted over. So we've got one texture here. Then we've got the unpainted uh, wood siding here. A lot of times this is cedar, which is used. Then we've got some uh, stonework material as well, and then more wood siding over here. So we've got different textures and materials used on this home. And then I would guess I would even count the garage door with the frosted glass panels here, another texture. So simply, simply stunning. Here is a similar home and this house is just gorgeous on the inside as well. A Little bit warmer wood tones, but it's that same kind of gray color, which I didn't talk about uh, exterior paint colors that are trending. Um, but I do want to point out that what is lovely on this and a lot of the exterior examples uh, that I've shown today is that the garage door matches the house and the gutters also match the house. So I didn't want to get into in this video a lot of what's not hot, but white garages, white gutters, uh uh, no more white trim, make it tonal to your house. Getting back to mixed media and textures here, so we've got the wood siding and a different type of wood siding going in a different direction here. So mixed media and textures on the front of the home. Now here is a smaller version, perhaps more accessible to a lot of us. Nice little uh, early uh, 1900s bungalow here. And we've got some shake style siding here. Then we've got like a board and batten type and then a lap siding over on the left. So this is a lovely example of a, a modest version of the mixing of the textures and materials on your home. For the last trend that we are going to talk about for 2021, home design is going to be shed roof lines and metal roofs. So shed roof lines are, you can think of it as you, if you imagine like a shed or a lean-to on the side of the house, right? It's built with a roof line kind of like this. So that's a shed roof line. Metal roofs, I predict, will start to become increasingly popular. It just has a certain contemporary look to it and metal roofs are a lot more efficient uh, than they used to be. Uh, there absolutely is a price difference between metal and like an asphalt shingle. Uh, a metal roof is gonna last you a super, super long time. And it's a look that's definitely on the upcoming trend. So let's explore some images. Here's this house again. I know I love to talk about it, but you can see the shed roof lines on it here. So the diagonals and there's a mixture of kind of more like flat. I mean, they're not flat. They look flat in this picture, but they're gently sloped here. So something that's perfectly uh, horizontal and then you've got the angles here. Absolutely lovely and splendid. Here's another version that has a curved shed roof line here and voila la, it's metal. Next image here, I think it's important to put in because this is kind of a more typical contemporary style home. And there's plenty of homes that are built like this and there's plenty of homes that are gonna continue to be built like this. So it kind of gives it more of a farmhouse, rustic, wilderness, camping, cozy sort of vibe here. This home is also on trend because it definitely has the different textures. So we've got the stonework and the siding and then the board and batten siding up here. So there's a lot going on here. So it's absolutely gonna make your home look more luxurious, the more textures that you can bring into it. Next here is a rendering 
shed roof lines again and metal quite lovely and the last one here is another metal roof line it's black and then here's the uh, wood siding again so wood siding natural textures definitely going to continue to be super popular let me circle back through these again stunning nice <laughs> and then stunning right so definitely look for these trends in 2021 and if you are thinking of making any home modifications or alterations i hope that this video is helpful to you most importantly i want you to think about your projected project for your home and i want you to think about what makes you happy and not necessarily following a trend blindly. If you like some of these ideas that I've presented and they've appealed to you, that's great. That's wonderful. But I encourage everyone just to do a reality check for themselves and go with the design that you like and that makes you happy. This is Erica Stout, licensed realtor in Washington State. And if you like content like this and are looking forward to seeing more design related content, please follow. Thank you so much.